love the feathers. You know how I've got a thing with feathers? You just love a feather. My name is Alicia Devon Carey. I'm 18 years old and I've been acting properly since I was about eight. Properly. I've done various short roles on TV series such as McLeod's Daughters, Dance Academy, a short feature that was with Rachel Ward and Brian Brown. Is he there? Stop breathing like that, you sound like a horse. I got a cold on the bus because of the air conditioning. That's when I was eight years old and that's what really was like, wow, this is kind of what I want to do. Finally reaching the end of school and being able to go to LA, it's actually going to give me the opportunity to be in the same room with these people and show them exactly who I am and what I can do. I have to prove I'm good first before I can say I'm good. You know what I mean? And that's probably why I'm going over. I really wanted Mum to come to LA with me because I've heard of many young actors going overseas just getting really lonely and for now I think it's important that I still have a grounding point. Oh, that's really nice. I've never been to America at all. And so I'm so excited. I'm so excited. Here I am, wait for a cab, wait for a cab, wait for a cab. Here is mum, she's reading a map, she's reading a map, wait for a cab. Oh look, there's Hugh Jackman. He has big feet. Oh my gosh, Shirley Temple. Some of the houses in the hills are so nice. I was just like, I want to live here. We saw Madonna's front gate, Tom and Katie's chimney, Posh and Beck's laneway. Imagine the neighbours you'd have, you'd be like, oh yeah, Cameron Diaz is over here and just got George Clooney over here. That'd be heaps of fun. <laughs> you'd have like dinner parties with them. I'm getting ready for the G'day LA Gala, which means that there's a red carpet. This is my first kind of real event in Hollywood. So this will be really great because I'll be seeing LA sort of as it's meant to be. You know, the whole glamour of it, I guess. To be honest, it's sort of freaking me out a little because <laughs> I don't know what to do. <laughs> Think Hollywood, be Hollywood. <laughs> the red carpet experience was a bit crazy. It had a great energy about it. It was very enthusiastic. You get on and someone asks, oh, who are these people? And they, you know, whisper the name. Everyone suddenly knows it. It's like Chinese whispers. And they're all screaming out your name. Look over here, look over here, Alicia. And you're just like, you don't know me at all. Why do you care? Like, it's so strange. The G'day LA red carpet thing was a bit full on. Just trying to maintain composure is really an art form in itself. Just that whole publicity thing is something a little bit new to me. I think more and more I'm coming to realise that actors are commodities and uh, you really do kind of have to do that stuff. Yeah, you can navigate it pretty well. Um, Where am I looking at? Looking at you, okay. Unfortunately, I guess there's going to come a time if for some reason I do start to get work that I'm going to have to be conscious of how the media perceive you and stuff. I already have a manager here in LA. His name is Gabe Cohen and he's already started sending me through auditions, which is really good. Today is my first audition and um, it's for this teenage rendition of Sex and the City called Carrie Diaries. I'm playing 15, 16, so I have to figure out something that would be appropriate for that. Jeans makes everything kind of look younger a lot of the time. So with that, it's a really good pilot to be a part of, primarily because it was such a successful and strong series before this. Carrie Bradshaw is a cult figure as well. You're playing a character that is so well known, respected and loved, but could potentially be playing that for a long time. For a role like this, they will often audition hundreds of girls. If they like me, they'll get me in for a callback. And if they really like you, you'll eventually go in for a thing called a test, which is two to five girls that they've chosen to audition in front of the heads of networks and executive producers. So it's quite a long and exhausting process to get the part, and it can get quite nerve-wracking.
So I went for my first audition on Monday, which was the lead role in the prequel for the Sex and the City series called The Carrie Diaries. I think I hyped it up a little bit in my head. It was sort of like any other casting. There were a bunch of girls waiting to go in. There was a casting director, camera man in a little room. You did your scenes quite a few times. It was short, snappy, fine. At the end of all my takes, um, the casting director was like, wow, your accent's great. And I was thinking, wait, either she knows that I'm from Australia already, or I just did a really bad job and she's trying to make me feel good. <laughs> now I just got to wait and see what happens. This one is an untitled commune thriller, which is a film. During pilot season, they're primarily casting for pilots, TV series. However, sometimes you'll get film opportunities too. Mary Brown, almost 18 years old, level-headed and stronger than she knows, with long hair and a wholesome purity. Ooh, she lives in a devoutly religious, old-fashioned commune. So I guess it's a thriller. It's about six girls that are born on the same day. And it's really interesting because it's Amish. Father, for all the deceits I may have foisted upon you, yours to me remains the gravest. Is that right? I actually really like the premise of the story and there are some really great twists and turns in it. I went for my first audition for it. Mary, are you coming? Uh, go ahead, I'll find you shortly. I didn't expect to see you here. Well, we shouldn't be, but our friend is missing. Missing? So the audition went really well, but you know what, you never really know. You could do a really, really good audition, feel really great about it, um, but sometimes you just don't even hear back. <laughs> so it's, I've been in this position many times before and I guess it's just, you gotta roll with it. Hey, hey, how'd it go? It was good, it was really, yeah. really good. It's all going really, really well. And it's just been a lot of general meetings, just getting to know the head of networks and various casting agents. Well, there's kind of quite a few things that have come in for you today that I've printed out. There's actually five pilot scripts already. So get reading. Yay! I like yeah. that there's lots to do. Yeah, it's good. And so it's just all starting to come together now. I'm really enjoying it. And LA is a place, it's got a real buzz about it, which I really like. I'm excited because I just got two emails, one saying that I call, got a call back for um, the first audition I did for the Carrie Diaries um, Sex in the Sea remake sort of thing. So that's really, really good. Uh, that's on Thursday. And then I also got a call back for the feature film that I went for the other day. So that's really great. Things are sort of heating up. It's good. It's good to know that people are interested. been almost two weeks and I've gotten two callbacks, so that's really great. One, The Carrie Diaries, and the second, the film, a commune thriller. So you go from the first audition, which is a cattle call of people, to the callback, which is a selected group that they're genuinely interested in. I haven't heard anything back from either one, but there are so many reasons why you won't get a role. You just don't match up with the family they're using, or your hair's too brown, or you're just not quite right. I've come very close, if not secure, roles in very big projects. Once when I was 14, again when I was 17 I was about to do a very big project, but because of financial troubles it didn't go. It's very frustrating when you come so close and you invest so much energy and you think you've got this part and it's so exciting and, you know, it just falls over and you're kind of back to where you started. There are kind of so many factors working against you in a way that I think having no expectations is a really good thing. Hey Hannah, it's Alicia. I've been waiting on the news for the two callbacks that I went for last week. One, The Carrie Diaries, and the second, the film, a commune thriller. You kind of never know what's going to happen when your manager calls. I'm always wondering if it's going to be good or bad news. First and foremost, you know this project, the Untitled Commune Thriller, basically what it's come down to is they're so head over heels in love with you, they have straight up offered you the lead of the movie. <gasps> what? <laughs> oh my god. So first and foremost, you have, you've just been offered your first project, which is the lead of a $10 million film. Congratulations. <gasps> Thank you so much. <laughs> oh wow. That was not expected. <laughs> <laughs> Gosh. I think as far as uh, track record and how it goes for people coming over to the state, you're doing pretty good. Yeah, I'm doing all right. <laughs> I consider it great, or I tell you the next thing, we'll consider it great. 
Um, Alyssa Weisberg called. They went crazy for you, and they want to test you on a carry diary. <gasps> no way! <laughs> so, not only does the movie want you, but you are now in serious contention. It's probably going to be one of three to five girls for the lead of the carry diaries on the CW. Jeez. <laughs> oh, wow. Tell me you haven't seen it yet. <laughs> no, but I'm pretty hot faced, I must say, actually. <laughs> it was fantastic news getting that phone call. Um, it's kind of hard, though, because I won't be able to do both because they're both shooting at the same time and you can't really test for something that you're then accepting the offer of another. So. I'll have to have a really, really good think about where I'm going to go from here. I'm off to another premiere event. <laughs> Lucky me. Um, well, actually, it's the after party of the Screen Actors Guild Award. Uh, my manager is wanting me to meet different agents just to see potential-wise what they could do for me. Two weeks into Alicia getting off of the plane, she booked the lead of a $10 million indie. That is so rare. The director of the Untitled Commune Thriller was so happy that they've actually straight up offered me the part, which is really flattering and like, I felt so happy. But um, it then coincided with this pilot that was happening, which is the prequel series to the Sex and the City, The Carrie Diaries, which I am going for the lead role of Carrie. I'm testing for it, which is a big deal, but I haven't got it. The casting director called me not even 10 minutes of her coming out of that audition saying she blew us away and we want to start a test deal. What that means is she is now seriously within two to five people in serious contention to actually book that job. But they're both shooting at the same time, which means I physically can't do both. So if I go for the Carrie Diaries and pass up the offer of the film, it means I could actually end up with nothing. Alicia has had a very interesting journey. Fly over from Australia and get a test offer on a pilot and a job offer to star in a film. So a test is a really big deal. Unlike other auditions and callbacks, you have to negotiate everything before you go in, right down to pay, promotions, and the fact that you're signing a seven-year contract. So my manager called and told me that I had to make a decision the night before this test whether I was going to sign this contract or not. And I freaked out. <laughs> I freaked the fuck out. It would be the choice between one or the other and say the pilot doesn't work out, then it means I've actually let go a definite film option. It's a really good pilot to be a part of. It would open up a lot of opportunities, but if they do choose you, you sign the contract, that's it. It was hard for me because I didn't want to be restricted to that one role. All right, we'll talk to you in a couple of hours. But I had to really think about what will give me greater leverage as an actor. If you do something like this, people then notice you, they recognise you, and you get a whole spectrum of choice that you, you never even dreamed of before. You have so much more power over what you want to do and how you want to be an actor. I thought, well, I think I'd rather do a potential pilot than just doing the film. And that effectively knocks me out of the film role. My test is today for Carrie Diaries. So there's about 30 people in the room. Um, it's not in a room, actually, it's in a studio, <laughs> so that'll be interesting. Um, I'm not nervous, I'm excited, which is really good. I'm just going to see how it goes. It's not like a normal audition, because there are about 30 people in a room. They're all the executives of the studios or producers, and they just sit around you and watch you do your scenes. I haven't seen any of your auditions. They base it purely on what they see in the room at that moment. There's a lot of pressure to get it right. You know, it's a very big role and it's a precursor to Sex and the City, I guess. There was me and one other girl. 
but yeah, you kind of make small talk, and then the casting agent's there, and the reader, and she's like, it's going to be fine, you know, you should be so proud that you got to this part, because we auditioned 400 people for this, and, you know, it's down to kind of this. The network has five days to decide who they want. That's it. And sometimes it's less, but they have only that long, and then I'll know. We'll see. I was waiting to find out the results from the Carrie Diaries test, and my manager called. They were like, just to rip the Band-Aid off, Carrie Diaries isn't going ahead. But they didn't choose the other girl either. The network thought that both of us appeared too young. It's just frustrating, because now that I haven't gotten the Carrie Diaries, I've also yeah. passed on the film role. And now I have nothing which is just shitty. I was on my way to a general meeting and I got a message to call my manager. <sighs> just maybe, do you mind if I give them a call? Hey Hannah, it's Alicia. I thought I'd lost the film, but then they called back and they are still interested. Hey there. However, they wanted me to sign a three-pitch deal, which is not the most ideal situation. The film company that was making this movie wanted to put a deal in place that would create optional pictures for her, which means they wanted to lock her in for two more movies after this movie. And while that sounds like, oh my God, that's amazing, it's actually not of benefit to the actor because if this film is a huge success and you move on past from that, they're saying, we want to have the opportunity in first position over any other project that may come your way that you have to do our movie. Okay, thanks, Gabe. Um, and I had to make a decision in the cab whether I was going to do the film or I wasn't going to do the film. I don't think I've ever made this many quick decisions I'm the worst decision maker there is. Like, I mean, I am so bad. We are going to a general meeting with Sofia Coppola's casting agents. Um, I love some of her films. She's really great. She totally holds her own. She knows exactly what she wants and how to get it. And I really admire that in a person. I'm just gonna text someone if you don't mind. Okay, okay. It was a really, really painful decision to have to make, but I had to say no to the three picture deal because it just wasn't going to be good for me in the long term. I'm pretty sure they're going to pass on me now because that's kind of hard to negotiate. But I think it was the right decision to make. Thanks, Lou. Thanks, Lou. I'm surprised that actually yours. came together at all, but it looks good. Um, I thought it was pretty good, so I don't care what they think. He did use pre-mixed dipping sauce. That was a bit weird. And sorry for that. <laughs> what are you saying, Alicia? I had um, a really huge week. Um, I've been having a pretty crazy few weeks, actually. Um, this week, I went for a test for a pilot, which was great. <gasps> wow. And it was basically the awesome. kind of a teenage rendition of like Sex in the City. That's great. Nice. That's awesome. And yeah, it was great, but um, they decided that we both were too young. Then at the same time, because I also got offered a film role, but. Yeah. Oh my God. Mm. What was this? It's like a, it's untitled commune thriller at the moment. But um, they wanted two additional pictures at the end of this film. Yeah. And I was like, well, I'm not going to do it unless you get rid of the two optional pictures. And so their attorney is really angry at them, but they got rid of the two options. <gasps> so you got the film roll? Oh my yeah. god, cheers! Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. And I was like, <laughs> I completely expected 
that I'd lost it. There was no way that they were gonna, they were gonna just go for someone else. How did it take you, that, how did it take you to, to get to the end of that story <laughs> to let us know that you just got a film wrong? When Alicia told us that she got that fantastic job, she deserves it, she deserves that success. She's taken a huge risk at the age of 18, straight out of school to come over and it's, uh, it's paid off in bucket loads already. So that's awesome for her. So shooting starts really soon in North Carolina. So I was like, that was a pretty sweet deal as well. <laughs> I scored the lead in a feature film which is currently called The Untitled Commune Thriller and it means I actually have to fly to Canada to meet the director, which is great because I get to fly to Canada <laughs> for free, <laughs> which is so exciting. It's really early in the morning and I'm a little nervous, <laughs> so it'll be good. You know, it was my first overseas trip by myself meeting with the director, Christian, to talk about the film. Look, there are the Canada planes. There's a city right out there. I'm in Canada. I'm in Canada. This is my first outing in Canada. Um, it looks pretty shit right now because we're really close to the airport, so it's not as beautiful as everyone else kind of says it is. But I'm going to Husky's gas station to get myself a um, car to phone people because my phone's not working. It was a really independent kind of grown-up thing to be doing and I felt so excited about it. Things are piecing together so nicely and happily. It was good. So I'm finally flying home from Canada. It's been a long trip. Not really, it's actually only been a day and a half. The director, Christian E. Christensen, we talked for like five hours and it was really, really great. We share very similar ideas and views on the script. I'm so glad about that. Hi! Hi! So it was good? Yeah, it was. And you did it! Was it freezing? Of course I did it! <laughs> so I have to leave early because rehearsals on this feature film in North Carolina start really soon. It was so lovely of all the other actors to throw me a farewell party. I just met you and I'd sat down, we had a really good chat and I became acutely aware very quickly of uh, how hardworking you were, how clever you were, how motivated you were, how level-headed you were. When you told us that you got that job, I was just, I was really proud. Um, so, uh, so well done. I think good things happen to good people and, and when it does, um, that's just, I don't know, it kind of makes me, it makes me, it makes me feel like, you know, um, you know, you know, if, oh, fuck, I lost it. Cheers. Ooh. Good on you. Well <laughs> Do Australians proud. <laughs> I'm going to miss hanging out with all of you guys. For them to, you know, see me off like that, it's just really, really nice. This film will go off and she'll have 30 days to shoot and all the rest of it. And then who knows beyond then? Maybe everything will take off and... We'll never see her again back in Australia, <laughs> who knows? To finally actually get something after having been through this didn't work out and that didn't work out. It's a relief. <laughs> I've come back with something which is more than I could have asked for. I think this is definitely the beginning of my independence. I'm not scared. I'm just excited. <laughs> I'm happy doing what I want to do. Really happy. Hi, so I'm finally on set um, of what was once called the Untitled Commune Trailer and is now titled The Occult. Um, so these are the trailers. Lots of them. That one's mine. Filming started a week ago in North Carolina and it's been an incredible experience and I'm having so much fun here and I'm in every scene, so I'm basically working sometimes like 12 to 14 hour days and you're just like, oh my God. There's Jason and, Ru and, and there's Rufus, who's getting his makeup done, who is playing my father on screen. How's it going? Hello, people. Yay. I would definitely not consider myself an overnight success. I know it may seem that way in the context of this show, um, 
but I've been doing acting since I was eight years old and I've come very close and have kind of really ridden the roller coaster, achieved roles and then have them kind of pulled up from underneath me. I've been really punching at it for years now, so for me it seems like it's kind of time.